Hey everybody, welcome to the Novice Fisherman's Guide to the Florida Keys number eight. We're going fishing. Before we head out and catch them up, let me share a story with you. Uh, I've done two stints down in Florida, especially the Keys. Uh, one for like three years, one for four plus years now. And I've got a lot of fishing in during that time frame. But to be honest with you, if I had to choose one most memorable experience of fishing Florida, it would actually have to be when I first moved to Florida, South Florida. Uh, I ended up just dropping everything and going and getting a uh, one of those extended stay hotels in Fort Lauderdale. Well, in the back of the hotel, they had those kind of holding ponds in the back. And every evening I would just go take a stroll on the bank because I'm always attractive. Wherever there's water, I'm checking it out for the fishing side of it. But I'd walk the banks and then I was picking up, seeing fishing line and fishing hooks and weights and stuff. Just kind of snags and uh, the clumps of line just run ashore. But then I also noticed that there's a little fish here and there. You got the little pumpkin seeds and a little, uh, all panfish and some bass and so forth. So I spent a day or two just scrounging around, piecing together some line that I found, collecting some hooks. And then uh, I would go to the um, vending machine at the hotel and they had honey buns for a dollar. So I'd buy those. And uh, I would go down, got the line tied up to a stick, and then I would just go to this little uh, outlet there uh, by that holding pond and put a little ball of uh, honey bun on a hook, throw it out there and just catch a bunch of bluegills and bass. And I just do that until sunset. And then you start seeing those like gator eyes popping up and then I head back in. But that was what I would do almost every evening, save four quarters throughout the day so I can go get my honey bun, go down there with my fishing stick and then catch a bunch of just little fish. And I was just super fun and I'll always remember that. So it's kind of like this fun fishing that we're doing now. Yeah, there's, you've got the TV show influence and even my channel, the YouTube QS kayak fishing can be kind of a bad influence in regards to how much stuff you can catch and how somewhat easy it looks. But a lot of times though, is you just got to kind of kick back and just do some fishing, fun fishing, low stress. And then you not only just have that fun part of it, but you also learn um, catching a small fish is really not different than catching a big fish. It works the same way. You just have to know all the bits and pieces. So that's kind of what I wanted to kind of enforce in these videos is that don't stress out about catching size and certain species. Just for now, just get used to just catching stuff. Because once you get good at catching a bunch of stuff, then you can move on to specific bigger stuff that's harder to catch, takes longer to finally get one. And a lot of times it's not as fun because you don't get as much action. And on top of that, if you have a few bad days in a row, you can come back to this kind of fishing and know for a fact that you're gonna bend a rod and have some fun and just catch a bunch of stuff and stress relief, okay? So anyways, that's my story. Uh, let's go do some fishing. Okay, we're at our first spot. This is actually an inside residential canal system kind of like a small creek slash canal that cuts through the keys. There's really not too many of these. This is kind of unique in that this canal runs through Key West and then it flows down these residentials. And we're standing right above some pipe systems that connect to another set of canals that run through there. That one goes all the way to Cow Key Channel and that way goes to the salt ponds by the airport. And with that, um, under tubes there, it provides structure. We've got water current, heavy water flow back and forth, um, extra structure with the mangroves. We've got depth here, as well as we're seeing bait. I'm already seeing glass minnows and pilchards uh, cruising around, as well as I see physically fish here. So we'll give this a shot. I'm going to be using the Ugly Stick GX2 combo. Uh, basically have six pound mono line and I've got a real tiny hook to start off with no weight nothing just the hook to the line real basic and then I'm going to use pieces of squid and I'm going to use my scissors to cut it up okay I've baited up with just a tiny piece of squid there kind of hide the hook 
and I'm just gonna be drifting it out there in the current and see what happens. Okay, we got fish on. Looks like a little mangrove snapper. And there we go. We've got fish on board. Dark little dude. Ah, there we go. Bending a rod. The bite was slow, so I moved on over to the beach and onto one of the rock jetties. I also switched out to a Carolina rig, which is basically a hook to about a foot of leader, to a swivel, to an egg sinker on the main line. And this will allow me to cast out farther and work the current that is wrapping around the jetty. Bite. I think I might want to have it. Oh. There we go. Oh, I missed him. Oh, no, he's on there. Stay out of the rocks. Man, these are like nice, perfect little baits. Little grunt. <laughs> perfect bait size. There we go. A little bit better fish. What do we got? Is that a baby mangrove? Yep, little baby mangrove snapper. <laughs> got three or four species. Okay, this is a good example. This little mangrove swallowed the hook. So I could start digging it out with my pliers to get the hook back. But a lot of times it's better to just cut the line, let them have it rather than killing them. They have a better chance of surviving this way. So I'm just going to cut it close to its mouth and let them go. And if I'm having a lot of problems with fish swallowing the hook, I'll go to these long shank uh, small bait hooks and uh, that'll make it easier to remove the hook even though they swallow it. All right, there we go. Oh, stay out the rocks. Ah, another one of those stripies. But as you can see, the hook is easily accessible. So I can just pull it out. Let this guy go. All I'm doing is just tossing it out there. Found kind of a spot where there seems to be a lot. Put a little bit of tension. Oops, missed it. There we go. Looks like other fish are following it. Out of the rocks. I think we've got, we found the grunt hole. That's good for me to know because that's good bait size. Okay, gonna call it a day. Um, caught a bunch of stuff, little guys, but that's what we're looking to do. Uh, just bend a rod, catch some fish, enjoy the sunset. So, nice evening on the water. Now I'm just gonna go home, take all my gear, give it a quick uh, fresh water rinse down and prepare for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna hit some uh, other spots, kind of like the bridges, the little channel spots, okay? probably up our fish game a little bit but this just gets us started uh, one thing about those fish that we're catching especially those grunts those make excellent bait for catching the bigger ones so definitely uh, woken me up to a new bait spot so otherwise until tomorrow see you in a bit so we've set up shop at a different spot this is a small bridge just one of the little creek entryways and we're talking about like this layout here. One of the things that a lot of people do is they instantly go towards the center of the channel. 
but they don't realize there's no structure there in the center. It's just sand, some rock. It doesn't mean there's not fish there, but the structure that we're looking for along here is gonna be these mangroves. All underneath there is where all the fish are hiding and just kind of just waiting and looking. You can see there's a bunch of mangroves along here, but they go right back underneath there. Fish don't generally like to sit out in the open because then they become prey. So that's why we're setting up here in the corner. It's kind of a shallow secluded spot, but that's where the fish are. So we're just gonna throw down a few baits and see if we can catch something. All right, we've got our first victim. <laughs> the mighty, mighty pinfish. This is actually a really good find. <laughs> they're a fun fish because they're very aggressive in regards to eating. You do want to watch out for their mighty, mighty pins. So these, 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 they'll stick you good. And you can see why that uh, long shank hook makes it nice in regards to being able to remove it easily. Why this is so important, well, down the road this is going to be very important because this is a perfect bait to uh, catch the bigger size fish that we'll be targeting later for now we're just trying to catch fish and this guy is on the menu so one down all right we have our second victim this is another but bigger pinfish this size is perfect for taking offshore and dropping on the wrecks or on the reef for a big grouper. Okay, we're catching a few, but let's go over the different types of rigs for these different type of locations. Uh, the rig that you use is really dependent on things like depth, the current, the type of fish, where they're at, and so forth. Um, right now I've got on that little knocker rig that I was using out on the ocean side, just because I was needing casting distance and then just getting the bait to the bottom. It's functional here, kind of. Like if I'm swinging the bait and just trying to drop it right underneath those mangroves, that's what it'll be good for, especially if the current is moving this way. This will get me down and be able to allow me to control the bait so that I'm placing it where I want it to. Now on the flip side though is presentation. You really want to try to match the hatch basically, or match like if I threw a piece of bait out there how it would actually react to the current so it looks natural to the fish and they'll come and get it. So we really want to kind of try to adapt our rig to that situation. So in this instance, because it's kind of shallow, there's not a lot of current. When I drop this weight with the bait on it, it just goes kerplunk and drops right down and it kind of sort of scares the fish away, especially the bigger smart ones. So I think a better option for here is to go to a thin leader on the end, but just a bare hook just a small bear hook that we can hide the, in the bait and no weight so we just slowly drift it there's hardly any current so it'll sink by itself and that'll give a more natural presentation so I've switched it up I've just got bare line took the weight and swivel off so it's just the line right to the hook so I just got a little small bait hook so I could really hide this in the bait so they really can't see it because it's so shallow, so clear, there's not a lot of water movement. They can really inspect it, so we gotta trick them. All right, there we go. Got something a little better. Whoa, come on out of there. No hiding in the rocks. Yeah, nice snapper. So we finally pulled that one get them up here without breaking anything there we go snap a cot that's borderline legal there too be close all we did was just drift the bait back and it was just nice and natural the little fishies were starting nibbling on it and this one got greedy once it felt like it was safe that uh, the other ones were uh, eating it so he could eat it too. Whoa! Oh, nope, 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 nope. Out of the, nope, nope. Ugh. You bugger. <sighs> I guess I'll give you the hook. Okay, there's our mangrove snapper that we've been looking for. Nice size one there. All right.
right, we got a good one here. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Play that guy out there. Fold him. <laughs> Another nice one. Tiny hook, piece of squid buried in it. All the little ones were nipping at it, and then he's got greedy and lost his his smarts and went after it. So and bring this guy up. So there we go. Another nice little mango snapper. So that's what we're looking for. Nice little bridge mangroves. All right, let's go check out a uh, boat launch. And that'll be something a little different. We'll give that a try. Okay, we're at our next spot. This is a basic, a boat launch and then a seawall that goes along here. It kind of goes shallow, shallow, and then right around there, it starts going a little bit deeper. So I'm kind of, the wind is cranking this way. So I'm going to fish this kind of corner area over here and I've got a setup back to what we had originally which was a Carolina rig which is a little sinker on the main line to a swivel that stops it and then about a foot of a leader and then to our bait hook so that's what we're gonna be throwing all right got a rig so let's toss it out Got a lot of wind. Oh, got something already. Hitting it. Playing with it already. So what I'm doing is I'm watching the bow in my line because the amount of wind, see how it's taking off? So something's touching it, playing with it. Little dinkers are messing with it. There we go. Little mangrove snapper. Little guy. Alright, there's fish here. I think something's got it. There we go. There we got something better. Where are you going? Whoa! Got me in the rocks. Oh, got him out. Nice, Snappa. <laughs> Whoa, no more rocks for you. There we go. That's a definite keeper. Beauty there. Ah, with the ugly stick GX2. There we go. Nice snapper. Easily over limit. Ooh, look at that baby All right, that's how we do it scale down your tackle be a little stealthy be patient and it'll pay off <laughs> All right, so that's the day uh, definitely been a rot today uh, Pretty good action. Uh, actually surprised got a few keepers so could have had dinner if I wanted it um, That kind of leads into our next video that we're gonna go target some a little bit larger size quality fish uh, maybe target some other species maybe get into a couple sharks or something like that uh, we'll see what happens there but we'll up our game just a little bit still want to bend a rod and have fun but maybe just bend the rod a little bit uh, deeper there so anyways thanks for watching and i'll see you next video bye